and we're back with another video. Now the plan for today is to get the oil feed finished up on the turbo. Now as you can probably notice I've already got the oil drain line on there. Um, I did come out here the other day and start recording some stuff but I came to a bit of a snag. So this video might be a bit mix and match of um, footage but I'll try and mash the footage together so it sort of makes sense and you get the gist of uh, what, what's going on. So when I was out here the other day, um, I wasn't too sure where I was going to run the lines for the oil and water. So I figured I'd grab the engine mount bracket and put it on to see what's going to be in the way as far as being in the engine bay. Because I've sort of got to mock it up out here without being in the engine bay, if that makes sense. Now the problem was when I went to put the engine mount bracket on, uh, there was no way it could go in with the external gate housing. So this being an FG uh, external gate turbo, um, the housing is designed in a way that it would clear the FG uh, engine mount bracket but this being in a B series the engine mount bracket is a lot bulkier and it fouls out on the bottom corner of the bracket. So I hit a bit of a snag um, but as you can see here I've cut out the corner of the engine mount bracket. Probably the dodgiest thing I've ever done on, on any car um, but this is just a temporary fix just so I can get all this happening without having a, a big snag, a hold up. So apparently the fix for this issue is I can use an AU engine mount bracket so apparently they're a steel bracket that bolts to the engine and they're a lot uh, less profile than this big bulky thing and it should allow me to run the uh, factory engine mount without having this issue. So I've jumped online, tried to look for uh, AU engine mount brackets and can't find any at the moment. So like I said, I've just ground this one out just to get me going. Um, it does clear the wastegate. I've checked it with the wastegate on there and the V-band clamp. So it'll do the job for now. But uh, definitely in the future, I'm going to have to swap this out because this will shit me to tears. But yeah, it's all on, all fits, and now it works. So it's not going to hold me up, and we'll be able to get this thing finished and back in the car. Now, like I said, it's probably the dodgiest thing I've ever done on any car, um, but it is a temporary fix just for now. So that was a bit of a snag, bit of a pain in the ass, but not really going to let it hold me up. I just want this thing all done and sort of back in the car. I can worry about an engine mount bracket at a later date. But as you can see, I did manage to get the oil drain on, so that's all sorted. Um, I just got some fittings on here. I've got footage of that, so I'll chuck that in the video here. Okay, just moved over to where there's a little bit better lighting and I can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, I've got everything I need laid out here. Now, I've got a couple of uh, options when it comes to the, the lines, but my main plan is to not have to run any water or oil lines around the front of the engine. Uh, on a lot of setups, you see those brackets that are bolted to the timing cover and the lines run across the front. Uh, I just want a little bit cleaner look, so I'm, I'm trying to avoid that. So I've just gone and got a generic um, Dash 4 uh, PTFE hose to run the oil feed and some fittings as well. Um, I'll put uh, the part numbers for these parts, what I use in the description of the video. Might help someone if they want to maybe do a similar sort of setup. Now for the oil return, I've just gone and got a uh, Demon Pro Parts uh, oil return kit. But most of the fittings I'm not going to use. I think I'm only going to use one of the fittings in the kit and the hose itself. So yeah, at least I've got everything there. So while I'm on this side, I might as well start with the drain. Um, I've got pretty much everything I need here to get it done. Now, I mentioned before I went and bought a Demon Pro uh, parts, I think it was, um, oil return kit. So this kit comes with Dash 10 fittings um, and just push lock hose. So this hose is just a push lock style. So you just got to push it onto the fittings. No need for any clamps or anything like that. And the way that the fittings are designed, um, it really bites onto the hose. No chance of that really ever coming off. The first thing I'm going to do is get the drain bung into the sump. So this is the part number here that I've got. So this is a Dash 10 38 BSP. This is just the one I'm using. Uh, and I also put a, I'll get it out. So I used a generic Dash 8 um, hose kit for my transmission cooler, which is just in the car there. And it came with uh, a whole bunch of fittings and all, all the fittings had these uh, rubber O-rings. So I pinch one of these O-rings and I'm going to use that on the thread that goes into the sump as well as a little bit of thread sealant just to make sure that that doesn't leak. All right, the rain has finally subsided, so you might actually be able to hear me. I'll get the bung out of the sump. This has been in the sump just to keep it all covered. All right, you got that bung out of there. I've got the fitting here ready to go with the O-ring on it. So I'll just get a little bit of thread sealant on the thread and then we'll get that in. Okay, I got some thread sealant on the thread, so let's get him in. Okay, got it in as far as I can by hand, so now I'll grab an adjustable spanner and just tighten him up. There we go, all tightened up. It's pretty tight. Hopefully it's pulled up enough. Um, I think the thread should seal it up anyway, and then plus there's sealant in there. So that should be okay. So now we can move on to the fitting on the bottom of the turbo. 
So there we are, that's roughly what you're looking at. So I need to get, now I need to get the hose from here down to here in the straightest sort of line possible. So maybe the 45 off the bottom of the turbo is a good idea. Uh, we'll get the fittings out and have a look. So I've just put the straight fitting on the bottom of the turbo and the 45 on the sump. And that will work. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know if I'm happy with it. I might even buy another 45, but then seeing that that there, I don't know if that's gonna really get the angle either. Um, what I might do is I'll put the hose on the 45 because I'm definitely going to use the 45 because once you push this hose on, you really can't get, go getting it off. It won't come off very nicely. So I'll put it on the 45 because I'm definitely going to use this fitting and then we'll see where we are after that. Now to get the hose all the way down, these can be a right pain in the ass. You've got to push really, really hard. I'll probably spray some WD-40 on here on these barbs. Um, and the hose just sits down inside that little recess in this ring here this ring here so the race works fitting this ring just slides on and off but yeah basically the hose just sits in there keeps it all centered and um, yeah the barbs grab onto the hose so we'll get this one on okay got the hose on that fitting well i didn't my son did he's six foot four and uh, he's pretty strong so he was able to get that on with just his hands now I will need to get it on all the way. It is still a tiny bit loose on the end there, but we can work on that later. But now I just want to get it cut to length. So what I'm going to do is I'll bolt it onto the sump and then we'll have a look at cutting the length. Um, I've got the 45 now on the bottom of the turbo. So it turns out that the uh, kit that I bought, the two fittings out of the kit are what I'm going to use. I'm not going to use the straight fitting that I bought. Um, Cause if you look at the way the hose is here with the 45 off the turbo, and I've just sort of bent the hose so it's facing back on itself. And you'll see it lines up pretty much perfectly for there, for that to go straight onto the 90. So I'll cut this to length and then we'll get this hose on that fitting and we're done. And there we go, I've cut the hose. I just used a uh, brand new razor blade and it cut through it like butter. And I've almost got this end on. So I was lucky enough to be able to bolt this onto the sump and I'm grabbing the hose here and pulling up and twisting at the same time. I've sprayed it with plenty of WD-40, so it's nearly home. So I'll get this one all the way in, and then we'll have a look at how it sits. There we go, all fitted up beautifully. I just need to nip them up. Um, I'm gonna to have to use a ring spanner to tighten this one up because uh, you obviously can't get in there with a spanner and tighten it. So that's easy. So I'll have to take this bottom one off, get a ring spanner in there and tighten that one up. So now that it's all fitted nicely, I'll get this off again. Uh, make sure these hoses are all the way in, because as you can see, tiny bit of movement there just on the little sleeves at the bottom slightest amount but I want to get rid of that um, and then we can fit it permanently and that's the oil drain done so now I can spin the block around so I can see the other side and we'll start on the oil feed now while I was out here the other day doing the oil drain I just had a bit of a play with the hoses and I think what I'm going to do is P clamp them just with these P clamps here I'm gonna tap a couple of holes, so an M6 hole into this side and this side here of the sump, just so I can clamp the hoses to the engine and that way they're not flapping about underneath the car. Okay, so I've got everything that I'll be using here. So I've mentioned before, I just got a uh, generic Dash 4 uh, hose kit for the actual line itself. So that's just a Dash 4 kit, comes with a few different fittings there. Pretty much got everything I need. I've gone and got, I'll show you the part numbers. So this is a uh, Dash 4, inline filter i'll open it up so it's just a little dash 4 inline filter just like the generic kits that you buy um, and you can open this up and clean out the little uh, filter inside now uh, this was going to be problematic for me because i wasn't sure where i wanted to mount this most of the kits that you buy you get a bracket um, sort of that holds the filter in place but because i didn't want to run this around the front of the engine uh, it's been bugging me how to sort of uh, keep it from flapping around either at the back of the head or underneath the engine so i'll show you how i'm going to do that now when I was out here the other day I did put the first fitting on so I was going to do it off the turbo and work my way around to the um, feed but I think what I might do is work from the feed and come all the way back around to the turbo. And here I've got a, uh, so this is a little adapter. This adapter is made to uh, tee into the original oil pressure sensor location on the engine, on the block. So that's the part number there. Just a stainless steel jobby, apparently better than the um, brass ones because the brass ones can crack apparently. And I've got a little, um, a dash four, a uh, little, as you can see here, a little fitting, which just screws into that piece there and gives you a feed for oil. And lastly, it's just this little guy here. So this is just a little uh, 18 NPT to a dash four fitting. That's the part number there. And I'll show you the reason I've got this fitting. Okay, so over on the engine now. And as you can see, there's two sensors here. 
So this sensor here is your oil pressure sensor, and this one is the oil temp sensor. Now, this is a BF engine, um, BABF on the FG engine. The FGs do not run this temperature sensor. Now I've gone and got an FG wiring harness for all of this, so I can run the FG coil packs and whatnot. Um, so I don't have provisions for that temp sensor in the wiring harness, but I have got a, uh, an adapter kit for that, but we'll get into that down the track. Now the two threads on these fittings are different, so whichever one you're gonna use, make sure you get the right adapter for that hole. I've got the adapter for this hole, so this is the one I'm gonna use. So I've got the sensor out. I have given this a ticker with a wire brush just to clean it up. And I've also put some uh, thread sealant on this oil temp sensor and tightened that up already. So that one's in, just got to get this one sorted now. Okay, I've just opened up that Raceworks adapter. So as you can see, that's it there. So this is a one quarter NPT thread. And this is the same thread as the block. So this can just thread straight into here, just like that. And the idea is it's got a one quarter NPT thread in the end again. So you can put your original sensor back in the end. And that should look something like that. Now this is all in loosely, just so you get the gist of it. So now you would put that little other Raceworks fitting into the end here. So this little guy here generally goes into this guy, just like that. So now you've got an oil feed for your turbo. So you could just go and put your hose straight onto that now and run that around to the turbo and you're good to go. But obviously there'd be no filter in the line. And that's where this little guy comes into play. So I'll get this fitting out. So that's all it is. It's a dash four uh, female end there to a 1 8 NPT because this thread here is a 1 8 NPT. So I'll take this fitting out. So that's that little guy fitted. So now the plan is to use this guy because this is gonna all be tight and rigid and firm. I can put my filter straight into here and have my filter mounted solidly and have my line come straight off here. So I'll screw the filter in and we'll see what it looks like. And there we go. So that should work beautifully. By the time I tighten this up, put some thread sealant on it and tighten it all up, this is gonna sit here nice and firm and I'll be able to put my hose straight off the end here and run straight around either way I wanna go down to the turbo. So now what I'll do is I'll get all these fittings off and I'll get some thread sealant on it and start fitting them up. There we go, got a little bit of thread sealant on the fitting, made sure to get none on the end so we don't get any into the block. So now we'll put that in and tighten them up. And there we go. Got the fitting in. So now I'll just get a little bit of thread sealant on this as well and put this guy in. Don't need much. There we go, got that little fitting on. So now we can easily screw the filter into there. These don't need any uh, sealant or anything like that because it's a um, orb fitting. They actually seal on the end of the, uh, the fitting themselves. So now all we need to do is get the original oil pressure sensor back into the end here. There we go, got some sealant on him. Let's get him in. And there we go, that's our oil feed done. So now we can mount our filter on here and run our line. There we go, filter's all tightened up. That is on there firm as fuck. That is going nowhere. So good peace of mind knowing that that's there nicely without floating about in the engine bay. And I can easily put a fitting onto that, go under the block and wrap around to the turbo. All right, so I've just come over this side of the engine. I've mounted the wastegate just so I can see where this hose needs to run. And it's gonna be a bit of a challenge. Now there's obviously gonna be a shit ton of heat around this side of the engine, um, especially around this area here, cause this is the exhaust housing for the turbo. Um, so I'm thinking I might have to pin this uh, hose down here somehow with a P-clamp. Um, but I do have the cross member going through here and an engine mount here. So it's kind of hard to tell exactly where I can run the hose until it's in the car. So I think what I might do is just chop a piece of this hose and leave plenty of excess um, that I can cut off later and pin it all up in the car and secure it all and then put it in the fitting on the other side of the block. But before I do that, what I might do is get out drill bit and the tap and I'll put uh, two little holes in here for the P-clamps for when it goes back into the car. Okay, I've gone and tapped one hole. So that's the first one done. So I've just used a uh, five mil drill bit and a little, uh, where is it? A little M M6 uh, tap. I just got this from Buddings. It was like $13 for a pack of three. I've got an M6, an M8, and an M4. I'll probably never use the M4, but the M8 and M6 are very handy. So I've already drilled out the second hole. I've just got to put the tap through that one, and then I'll test some bolts out and see how it looks. Now you can see here, it's a fairly safe spot in the sump to drill. Uh, the holes just come through up there. It's not exposed or anything. So I'll get that little bit of swarf out um, once I've tapped the other one. It should be good to go. And there we go. Just tap the second hole, 
Got all the swarf out of the back of the sump. Got a little M6 bolt here, so let's test it out. See if I can do it with my left hand. Bloody beautiful, mate. And there we go. That is gonna work beautifully. I've just put a little spring washer on there and a little flat washer. And um, yeah, that's holding nicely. Doesn't need to be anything um, tight. It's just enough to secure those hoses and stop them from flapping around underneath the engine. I've faced the P clamps this way, so hopefully they'll clear the cross member, which I think they will. Um, yeah, so it should be good to go. Now I've just come around to the back of the engine, just so you can see that the bolt is sticking through just there. Now obviously that's sticking through quite a bit. If the head shears off, that it's threaded into the sump anyway, so it should be fine but I'll definitely um, change that bolt out and run some shorter ones. I'll just put that one in just to test out the clamp. So if we put some shorter ones in there, that'll be fine. That should work good. And there we go. Got the two P clamps on at the back of the sump there. They're just in loosely, haven't tightened them up or anything. But I think what I'll probably end up doing is putting the water line through these clamps just because of the size of it. It's perfect size for the water line. Um, and then I'll somehow just attach this oil line to that, maybe with some cable ties or something. But it's looking like it should work. I think what I might even do is just if I kink the hose like that, I might be able to get away with putting another P-clamp here, and that might even work. I think I might be able to do that and um, have that in the car without any real issues. So what I might do is take this bolt out here, put a P-clamp on it, and just see what it's looking like. There we go. I just put a P-clamp in the sump there, just loosely, and uh, I think that might even work. It's all just got slack in it and just loose, but um, at least it's following the flow that we sort of want. Like I said before, I'll tweak all this when it's in the car. This is just to get the thing in the car and um, hopefully get the thing started. So now the last thing to do is go to the other side and get the fitting in the filter and the oil feed should be done. Okay, over the other side now. Just spun the block around so I can see what I'm doing. But um, it looks like that this is going to work a treat because as you, as you see here, the hose kinks up on an angle. I've just chucked a 45 fitting in the back of the oil filter there to see how that's going to look. And it pretty much lines up perfect. So as long as I've got enough slack on the other side there to move it around in case I need to um, move it around the engine mount when it's in the car, this should work. So I think what I'll do is I'll cut the hose up here, give myself a bit of excess because I know I've got plenty of room on the other side for movement. I'll get the fitting on and then we'll fit it up and see how it's looking. And there we go. Got that fitting on, marred it up a little bit because I don't have aluminium spanners, but that's all good, no stress. But for right now, I'm pretty happy with where everything's sitting. It's definitely going to work. Just got to do some tweaking and fine tuning. But like I said before, we'll do that when it's in the car. So that'll be it for this video. Oil feed is now done. I'll be back out here again tomorrow after work and I'll be getting stuck into the water lines. But that'll be the next job to do. Pretty happy with how those P-clamps turned out on the sump. I just hope they sort of clear when it's in the engine bay, but I think they will. But that's one more job ticked off the list. Oil feed and return done. And we'll be back out here tomorrow. Slowly coming together.